Okay, so now I am in the AWS console and that's the main page you see when you start with AWS. Now in the AWS services, you can click on services and see all of them. And we will not learn all of them because that's probably ages to learn all of them. But what we'll learn is the most important ones for the certification exam. And so the first one we need to get started with is IAM. Now you can also look in there and find that IAM is right here. But as a developer, what I like to do is to be efficient. So anytime I need to find a service, I'll usually tap it in the bar. I'll tap IAM and it'll give me a link straight to the service. To me, I find this a little bit easier. Now, when we start with IAM, as we see, it's a global service, as I said, okay? The users, the roles, everything is created globally. Now, as you can see, we start and we have almost nothing in our accounts. We have zero users, zero groups. We have two roles, but these are roles basically created by AWS for us. And we get a security status that doesn't look good for now. It says what you need to do to make sure that your AWS account is secure. So what this is exactly what we have to do right now. So the first one is delete your root access key. So the root access key provide uh, access to your AWS accounts and you should never use them, okay? So never ever use them. So basically we'll have to delete them and throw them away. Now we can activate MFA for multi-factor authentication on our root accounts. So I want to do this right now. Basically you click on manage MFA and then basically you say, okay, we're accessing the credentials page. We say continue to, cre uh, to credentials. And so we can enable MFA and click on activate MFA then you can choose whether it's a virtual or hardware. If it's a virtual like me, you can use an application uh, such as Google Authenticator for this. So I'll let you do it, but basically you can go, download Google Authenticator and do this. So what you have to do when you open Google Authenticator is to scan um, this QR code. So you scan the barcode and then once the barcode is recognized, it's going to give you two authentication code. So for me, it's 662-498 and this will appear in your app directly and then you need to wait a little bit, okay, until the next code arrives and then enter that code. So my second code is 327-933 and then I activate my MFA and great, the MFA was successfully associated. So basically now our root account is protected by a multi-factor authentication and I'm sure that only me with my own personal device can log into AWS. So I feel much better about it and now we have a green tick. Now we need to create individual IAM users. And so to create users, it's basically create our first users. So I'll click on manage users and add a user and I'll create my own super user and I'll call it Stefan. Stefan, that's me. And what type of access do I wanna give myself? Well, I want to give myself a programmatic access, that's for sure. And also the AWS management console access so that I can use a password to sign into my management console. Now we can choose an auto-generated password or a custom password. We'll just keep it auto-generated. And then basically when I first log in, it's going to require a password reset. And then I click on next permissions. And basically I say whatever I want and stuff. So we can get, add a user to a group or copy a permission from an existing user or attach policies. For me, I'll just attach directly policies just to be quick and I'll give myself an administrator access. Basically, I want to use that account to do my course. So I'll give myself administrator access. And basically, uh, if you look at the permission boundary, you can just create it without one, okay? Because this is an advanced feature and we don't need it right now. So we click on next to review. And basically it says, okay, here is me, that's Stefan. And the permissions I have is I have administrator access, which is great. And I also can change my own password, which is great as well, right? So I'll go ahead and click on create. And all of a sudden, my user is created. So basically, I successfully generated a user and I can view and download the security credentials uh, for that user if I wanted to. So I click on download CSV and this is something I'm not showing you and you should not see, okay? But basically, this guarantees that I have a user and then once that page is gone, I won't be able to see it again, okay? So I'll close this page and now we're good. So we have Stefan as a user and what I'll do is that I will re-log in to my page very soon as this user. Now, if we go back to the dashboard, we can also have groups, okay? So what we have with groups is basically group the users together such as we can know and group permissions and save a bit of time. So I'll manage a group, create a new group, and for this, I'll call my group admin, okay? And I'll click on next step and I'll give administrator access to that group. Click on next step and then create the group. So fairly simple, I created a group called admin, but you create a group named whatever, developers, whatever, and create the group. Now the group admin basically has its own permissions and the permissions administrator access. So what I want to do is add my users to my group. 
So this is myself, I'll add Stefan to this group. And now we can see that Stefan is part of the administrators and as such, it will inherit the permission of that group. So what I can do is I can go back to the users now, go to Stefan, and what I can do directly is detach these permissions because they're attached directly and this is not very manageable. So I can detach this administrator access, which was attached through the group, okay? So now we have a much better setup because my administrator access has been provided through the group. So this all looks great. And then finally, we can apply an IAM password policy. Now an IAM password policy is basically to guarantee that IAM users, such as myself, will create strong password and these passwords will change often because I don't want passwords to hang around for a year. So if I click on password policy, you can see all the requirements that there is, but basically uh, you will need to set a minimum length, allow users to change their own password, and maybe I want to expire passwords after 90 days, okay? That sounds about right, but you can choose whatever requirement you want. I'll apply the password policy and we should be good. So now all here is green. And as I said, I do not agree uh, for anyone to use the root account. So what we'll do is go to customize and we create an account alias. I'll call it data cumulus courses and I'll say yes, create. And so basically now the IM user signing link is right here. So this link is what I will use to sign into my AWS console. So I'll go up in the tab and click on console. And right here, I have the IM username, which is going to be Stefan. And I need to set the password. And the password is the one that you got from the credentials.csv file. So what I'll do is that basically I'm going to my credentials.csv file and you can't see it. I copy and paste the password and sign in. Now that I'm signed in, as you can see, I must change my password to continue. So I paste my old password and I'll just type a new password that I'll generate and fill using my password manager, but you can type whatever you want, just make sure it's secure. And then I'll confirm the password change. And now, as you can see on the top right, I am logged in as the IAM user Stefan in my account data cumulus courses. So once you have IAM user, this is basically saying, hey, I'm not using the root account anymore. I'm using this user that I created from before. And this is a much better thing to do. So if I go back to IAM, as you can see, everything looks complete, everything looks good, and I'm created and I have uh, all the users and rights that I want. So that's it for the setup. Just remember, really, really, really important for you to set up a user that has admin access and use that user instead of your root accounts. So that's about it. And I will see you in the next lecture for some much more funner stuff.